Rob. Kettle. Kettle? Yep. We're, hang on, we're wildcarding and you still pick rock. Exploding arm syndrome. In the nude. <laughs> Inside, I was like, oh, we're bomb. I'm sorry, I can't help but watch what's going on over there. Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Reese here from More Than Lifting Podcast with my good friend, fellow co host, Chris Thatcher. Do you want to say hi, mate? Hi, mate. Cool beans, we're talking about calisthenics, body weight training, gymnastics, strength, skill development, maybe a couple of weight things, and uh, that, that's about it. In this episode, we are catching up with Chris on how his training is going now that he's started again, because he's a lazy bastard. And, <laughs> I, uh, I, never, I never actually <laughs> stopped, I just was, I was working sort of more sporadically with training, I was just, you know, wasn't on uh, a good routine, but uh, yeah. yeah, we never stop. And, uh, and also we're going to talk a little bit about uh, me going into specific skills programming, which is going to be quite fun too. Uh, but I'm going to save that to later when everyone's bored of our waffle. Uh, for now, let's just talk about some other stuff. Yeah. Chris, uh, what, 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 have you been, uh, what have you been getting on with in your training? What have you been doing, mate? What have you been out partying on the pole, dance, uh, <laughs> the pole dancing scene again? I'm not quite on the pole dancing scene yet. But no, firstly, before I get into actually talking about any of my stuff... Um, I was really quite impressed. The, there's a post you put up on Instagram the other day. Uh, you doing your training for the cross? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, we talked about that in the last episode, and it's come up obviously before as well about you know just developing general strength uh, to get you into that sort of position. And I was a really cool video that I'd never even thought of as a technique using the cable machine. Doing the, well, to simulate rings. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I'm actually, I've got it on my phone right in front of me now. Actually, it's um, yeah, it was kind of cool. It's it's not often I see things being done in a traditional gym that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of as a means by which to kind of progress on a certain discipline. It's because you're so bloody smart, Chris. I know, I know. Well, like, the thing is, I've just been around gym for so long. You end up seeing pretty much everything, and I've I've had the fortune of working with and you know learning from some amazing coaches in my time so Mensa. yeah indeed yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so i i've you know as i say i've picked up a lot of cool stuff along the way and that was one thing i was like oh right actually yeah that's a great way of showing how even if calisthenics gymnastics work is your thing you know how to use a more traditional gym setting cable machine in this case but obviously you know in other respects you know using external weights like dumbbells kettlebells you know can obviously have quite a, a big carryover to developing for more body weight based drills so um it was kind of a, i thought it was a really good example of that so well yeah played. yeah it's something we uh, we talked about like say in the last episode about developing uh, some stuff but i didn't actually go through that drill really right and uh, i stuck it up because i thought it was relevant and i've got the one of me doing um with the assist belt on the rings as well at gymnastics, which basically displaces about 50% of your body weight sure. so that you can work on a, like, because otherwise it's very hard to train the cross in that position because you can either hold it or you can't. And if you can't, you're going to fall straight through. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that's really good, guys. If you haven't seen that, check that out. If you're interested in doing like some rings programming or some uh, like training for, for the cross or something like that, that, that exercise is great. It's a great way of developing your, your strength and also um, helping to develop the, your joints as well. That's particularly your elbow. Like I do this. Um, I've been doing this a little bit down the gym and it's been great because I can put it on the lower weight and I, I know that like, I can do muscle ups on a much higher weight than what I was doing for that exercise. But coming down into that cross, you need to do low weights to be able to pull that position and get the press back in uh, without risking something like a shoulder dislocation, <laughs> <laughs> exploding arm syndrome or something like that, you know. So yeah. definitely check that out. And if you if you uh, train down the gym, like give it a go. It's really fun. All, the, all I'd recommend is having one of those little yoga mats for your knees to lean on because otherwise you're going to be resting on like laminate flooring or concrete or something. And we don't want poor scraped knees, do we? No, we certainly don't. No, it's, no. Uh, you know, it's got to be tough, but it's got to be safe as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I tell you what, actually, right, another thing that I've, I, I've been doing down the gym, which I haven't got a video of, is um, they, they've, they've got this, this new pair of dumbbells which have, like, hexagonal um, bells. <laughs> right. Uh, instead of round ones, like all the ones, this gym I go to like, that I've got this membership for, it's total squalor. And uh, I, I keep it purely for the, the sauna and the steam. I don't really use the... Um, I don't really go there for training much. And if I do, it's just to use the frame, really. I don't really use the weights. But 
what I've been doing is using these hexagonal ones, they're like 20 kilo or something, so they're quite, they're quite high off the ground, which is nice. And I've been using them as parallettes in the middle okay, of the floor. Yeah. I've been going down when it's, when it's quiet, because I usually go at like 12 or 1 or like 2, do you know what I mean, in the, in the midday kind of afternoon time where it's empty. Mm. So I, I don't feel like a knob, like going down there and doing all my calisthenics and like getting in everyone's way or like, do you know what I mean, doing something that doesn't look too difficult so people are like, what the fuck is this guy doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not because I'm self-conscious or anything, like, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just a bit, it's a bit cringy, it's a bit awkward and I understand like, how other people can feel like that, which is why I teach people to train outdoors or train somewhere else or at home or whatever anyway. But um, yeah, so I've been doing handstands on these uh, parallettes, practicing handstand, free hand, uh, free standing handstand push-ups on the things because stability is a lot easier than it is when you just got your hands flat on the floor because you can actually grip something, so you engage in all your forearms, yeah. and it uh, enables much better. Uh, adjustments from your wrists which is obviously key for, for your handstands well, I was gonna say it gives your wrist a bit of a break as well uh, you know when they're kind of permanently getting flexed all the time when you're doing traditional handstands just to kind of yeah like, yeah ease up a little bit it's like doing press-ups off your knuckles it's kind of actually just nice as challenging as it can be and you know, we do a lot yeah. of that in martial arts but it's actually nice to you know do that as opposed to always kind of having the wrist flex back constantly yeah yeah definitely absolutely and it helps you engage like your arms a lot better in the handstand position as well yeah. so it's really beneficial but um so yeah i've been doing uh, the presses like that i've been doing like uh, slow negatives to elbow levers i've been doing um down to l sits i've been doing straddle presses uh, pike presses which are um basically we come straight off the fl like the floor with your arms straight and you you lever straight up into it you see people do it uh, in yoga and stuff, and you see people do it very badly in calisthenics, but when where they bend their elbows, you know, mm. what I mean, it's not a it's not a press. Yeah. It's not it's different to a push up. You know, it's a lever from your shoulders. So, but uh, so I've been doing that, and you know what? Actually, I rolled out at one point. I, I was on there, and I I was talking to this guy about it, and then I went and done another one, and I was holding it, and I w I'd done the press. And then I done another press up, and then I done another one, and then as I come up the last one, I slightly tipped too far forwards, so I had to do like a rollout, which is this dismount from a handstand. You can find it out on the uh, if you check out the website. There's a whole page on handstand skills, and uh, I landed right on my back, bruised up the back of my pelvis and my bum, and like it was just because because I was a little bit higher off the ground, and like I rolled out onto like hard floor where I'm used to just smashing it out onto carpet at home or the gymnastics floor, mm. and uh, I was just like, oh, I got up still, like I didn't show anyone that I don't myself, but <laughs> inside I was like, oh, me bum. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the the one major downside of doing particularly body weight calisthenics gymnastics stuff in a gym environment you know especially yeah. handstand stuff where because it's not set up for allowing for tumbling or falling or anything like that so i've had quite a few falls myself out of handstands you know where i've come down too fast or my shoulders are just given because they're absolutely knackered and my head's kind of hit the floor and you know that's never good because you start obviously, seeing stars <laughs> yeah you know obviously if you had a nice soft mat under you it wouldn't be so traumatic but as it is i've kind of hit some concrete floor or you know so at the very best rubber matted but not very thick bouncy rubber just very thin typical gym matting so yeah, um, yeah you can do these things and you know i think it's great to to try and utilize a, a typical or traditional gym space to do as we said you know work that's going to complement what you're trying to achieve in the gymnastics set in the gymnastics area but yeah i guess also it's cool because it it gets other like we talked about before it gets other people thinking and looking and you know wondering what you're maybe doing and you know sort of seeing the possibilities and you know almost kind of wanting to ask questions themselves you know if someone sees me doing handstands in the gym or even just wall presses or something like that the first thing that you know they'll do is you know how do you do that or i or a comment i could never do that and you say well i couldn't do it at some point so you know here's how you would start and here's some good progressions and you know, maybe give a, give the bench press a break for a little while and try and focus on something that's going to be a little bit more of a, a challenge to you. It's going to give your body something extra to think about. So yeah. it's great. It's a great conversation starter because I think I'm trying to remember now about what we were saying in the last episode in terms of you know sort of algorithms and you know going into spaces where you essentially people aren't doing or talking about the things that 
you would typically talk about. So you go into a gymnastics place, everyone's talking about gymnastics, everyone's doing gymnastics. You go into a typical gym, you know, obviously everyone's deadlifting, benching, squatting, or just kind of bicep curling themselves to death. And it's it's great to go into a space where the conversation isn't about a particular discipline, but get the conversation onto that. So going into a gym and doing your body weight work and highlighting to people how they can utilize that to get stronger in their other lifts, their more conventional uh, lifts, and also just mm. to challenge themselves in a different way. Equally having a conversation with people in a gymnastic setting about, you know, well, actually some of those lifts that you maybe aren't that big a fan of or have never really considered, particularly the larger compound work you would get in a gym from external loading, you know, with barbells and dumbbells actually could have a really great complement to the work you're doing in the gym as well. You know, just mixing it up a little bit every now and then testing yourself in a different way. So um, yeah. rather than kind of preaching to the converted, actually starting a conversation about, you know, some different stuff with a different group of people. Yeah, an alien, an Israelian or some other kind of alien from somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely, yeah. And you know what, though, right? I find people don't talk to me about calisthenics in the gym. Like, they might see me and, like, talk amongst themselves about it or, like, give me funny looks. Mm. It's only when I get in the sauna or the steam room with them. Yeah. Because, like, I'm one of those people, if you sit down with me, I will talk to you. Yeah. Like, we will have a conversation. And the sauna and steam is perfect for cornering them. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But it's it's the perfect opportunity for for those questions to go back and forth, and it, it lowers that barrier of like intimidation or um, confusion, or or because a lot of the time, like when you're training, you're in the fucking zone. Do you know what I mean? You don't yeah. want to spend twenty minutes chatting with someone about fucking boxing. But it's kind of a, just a, an etiquette thing, isn't it? Particularly in in the UK, like there's two places you definitely don't just talk to strangers, and it's the gym or the tube. Like yeah, you, 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 know you start chatting actually... to someone on either of those just freely, they're going to look like you like like you're some sort of lunatic, and they're all going to be worried, or you know maybe get the mace spray up. I got a pretty good tube story. <laughs> <laughs> Do show. So uh, when back when I was uh, doing my engineering, right, I um I was on the tube one day moving between two jobs. And uh, these, the, when I was doing engineering, for the listeners, like these are like big, big, like multi-million-pound banks and commercial properties and stuff that, um, that I used to work on doing commissioning um, with my good friend Keith Bazin. Not that you're listening to this, Keith, though, but if you are, mate, I bloody love you. I'm going to give you a shout on Christmas and surprise you. So uh, see how you're going with the Griswolds. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, private joke there, but still. So I was on the tube. And uh, I was like standing next to this girl. She was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And uh, um, when I'm on the tube, uh, uh, I'm usually just got some music on. I'm like almost singing. Like I've actually caught myself singing actually on the tube before as well, embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, so I, anyway. da- I dance on the tube, so don't worry. Oh yeah, that's cool. Anyway, <laughs> so we're all packed in, and these two chairs kind of kind of like, empty out. Like so, I, I, I'm all right standing up. I look to her. I go well. I'll, do you, do you want to have that seat uh, to her? And I'm kind of pointing down. She's like, she was like, oh yeah, thank you. Do you not want it? I was like, no, I'm getting off in a couple of stops. So she sits down. Anyway, the seat opens up immediately, opens up next to her. And she goes, oh, you can sit down as well if you want. I was like, nah, it's all right. You just give it to someone else. And I, and I turn up and this old Indian, it couldn't have been better. Like it couldn't have been better. This old Indian woman, as it like kind of comes around the little glass window thing by the door to go and sit down and I go I stick my hand out and I go no 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 not her <laughs> not thinking like what I was doing it could have been anyone it could have been a tall ginger white man it could have been a tiny little like Asian dude it could have been absolutely anyone but this come out so racist I was like no 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 not her <laughs> then I kind of immediately like shock face put my hand over my mouth like fuck what have I done and everyone looks at me and I kind of I kind of laugh it off and uh, I, I look at her and I go now look what you've done you've got me in trouble like with everyone and she kind of laughed and smiled at me and uh, kind of it all went it all went from there I ended up sitting down next to her got a number we uh, we held hands going up the escalator because I was like oh I'm getting off here she goes oh so am I I was like, well, we can hold hands on the escalator, but don't let anyone see because I get jealous. Like, just messing around, you know what I mean? Not anything serious. But she just, she really enjoyed the, the, the kind of game that we were playing. And like, I did as well. So, like, she, like, grabbed hold of my hand and we were, like, walking up the escalator. It was, it was proper funny, man. Like, good, good moments like that. Good fun tube situations. Ah, yeah, sounds lovely. And uh, how did you mess that one up? 
she had a she had a, a situation with uh, a, another man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair so enough. I didn't mess it up really. She did. Oh uh, well, never mind. If you're listening, love, commitment issues, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool though it's, it's actually kind of a, it's a fun story uh, because it's like you made a game out of it you made a joke out of everything you made it light hearted like that's one of the few ways by which you can just start a conversation with someone when you kind of do something that's a bit observational do something that kind of makes fun out of yourself a little bit it's a bit self deprecating you know rather yeah. than sort of just awkward silences or hi how are you type conversations and like they say I, you know no woman in the history of the, the planet has ever woken up and thought, I really hope I don't get swept off my feet today. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all you guys listening out so there. So, be a road sweeper. Yeah, no, not at all. All, all you guys <laughs> out there, you know, if you see a, a good looking lady who, uh, you know, takes your fancy or someone you think just, you know, deserves to have, you know, be given a smile for the day uh, in a nice, non threatening, non aggressive way whatsoever. Yeah, non perverted uh, as well. Don't go around flashing people. Just, yeah, give them, you know, Little little smile, little cheeky cheeky bit of humour. You know, it can go a long way just to lightening someone's day, if nothing else. And best case scenario, you might get a number. But uh, yeah, it's all about connections and uh, doing those in the least aggressive manner possible. Anyway, yeah. so that's all from uh, the More Than Lifting Dating Advice podcast. Um, yeah, now we'll move on to our news segment where we talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be about the only thing we haven't talked about yet, surely. And that's quite yeah. good considering that we're British. Yeah, and the weather's like our, our one point of call when it comes to small talk. Because seriously, like, how many conversations ha- are you having? What percentage of your conversations right now do you think are something to do with the weather? And I mean everything, whether it's sunny, rainy, whether it's hot, cold, the amount of times you yourself comment on the weather every single day. Well, um, when I talk to strangers or, like, uh, just acquaintance or, like, work colleagues and stuff, almost every conversation i'm like oh you're right mate yeah yeah what's going on yeah well fucking weather do you know it just comes in like that doesn't it so i think it's a proper british thing like just moan about it doesn't matter if it's sunny raining cold frosty hot there's a drought there's a fucking tsunami it doesn't matter we always like moan about the weather it's kind of a shame though isn't it that it's like that's the go-to conversation it's like we don't have the capacity to even in small talk have well, I think it's the one deeper. thing we all have in common, you know. We all experience the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll have something a little bit more in common than that, you know. Some sort You're of a bloke. <laughs> deeper level of consciousness. We all share, you know, similar to some extent physical uh, physical entities, physical bodies. So, um, you know, we've How got are your haemoglobin levels doing? Yeah, exactly. You know, what's, uh, what's your <laughs> How's your metabolism today? Yeah. <laughs> uh, been on any spiritual journeys recently? Um, not particularly, no. You know, I have um, I, I haven't really been meditating very much, and usually I do, and I recommend to everyone to meditate because in like the last decade, there's been so much science going to studying meditation, what it does to your body, physiologically, um, emotionally, you know, everything it can do. It's you're doing yourself a disservice by not meditating. Mm. There's there's so much saying like everyone's like you should be fucking meditating. You know what I was talking to someone the other day and they've uh, just uh, randomly as it happened she does she runs webinars for this uh, this company. I was like holy shit you're cool as fuck. And <laughs> proper geeked out for like twenty minutes talking about webinars and then <laughs> and she was like uh, yeah we've started getting. Uh, kids doing their GCSEs and SATs, they have uh, meditation hours. Great. I, I was like, what? This is actually getting into schools? And she was like, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And I was like, holy, it is amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, but it's, I think- it's um, unfortunately, it's, it's nothing new. I mean, they do, in, in a lot of Eastern, East Asian countries, they do Tai Chi before they start school because it connects students more physically and mentally. Yeah, I think it's it's something that yeah I'd love to see happening more and more in the UK and across the world in general. I think it would just put kids in a much better place from a learning perspective, but also from a, a sort of connection perspective to themselves <laughs> and obviously to other people and teach them yeah. to be a little bit more empathetic. 
Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. But you know, I see. I see the same thing in the training world. It's like we're a big part of what we're talking about is you know how you can, and I guess it's maybe you know how we got onto it to some extent. You know, we're talking about everything complements everything else. You know, there is a means by which some form of collaboration in terms of your own training between gymnastics work and gym based work. You know, finding a crossover point which is going to give you the best sort of results, the best return, the best diversity in your training and your movement. You yeah, know, that's a great thing to strive for, and it's certainly you know a large part of my training journey my movement journey is just finding how many different things i can to like we were talking about in last week's episode just complement you know the things that i'm most interested in and you know ultimately my major interest is just being physically fit well strong you know and to have a body that's going to last me a very long time in the best possible condition it can hmm. yeah yeah and i think uh, i think there there's so much that you can do to feed into it like it's worth dipping in dipping your toes into like different disciplines trying out different stuff Maybe, uh, dare I say it, doing some deadlifts or maybe doing a bench press or, okay, I'm not going to go as far as say bicep curls, but, you know, maybe do it once or twice. Well, it's interesting because, so here's a lesson on that exact note. From where I've not been training consistently, where the little bit of maintenance work I was doing in the gym recently uh, for the last few weeks was very much just around compound lifts. So it was, you know, I'd occasionally do deadlifts, bench, pull-ups, squats, because I know they were going to give me the biggest bang for my buck, the greatest return on the smallest amount of actual time and, and effort in that respect. So I could go, you know, have very quick workouts because I had to get in and out in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, or you just couldn't be asked, really. <laughs> yeah, I was just being lazy. But then on top of that, I wasn't doing any of the accessory work, any of the direct ab work or arm work or even sort of single leg work that I would otherwise be doing and I I definitely feel that now coming back into it on a more regular basis you know just the the limiting factor in the fact that I've lost some strength through my arms so once I'm doing once I've been doing pull-ups and some form of rowing based movement I'm starting to fatigue quite a lot earlier because that extra little bit of endurance and strength I would otherwise have had in my biceps from doing just some direct uh, arm work at the end of a workout typically i'd normally do some generally high rep work at that point because you know the, the lower rep strength work as we've talked about before in, in energy systems isn't really going to be that relevant because i'm not going to do you know a five rep max bicep curl it's not really necessary and it's not really something i'm going to get most out of at the end of my workout likewise yeah. i'm not going to start my workout with bicep curls i want to get a bigger compound lifting like uh, as again we said pull-ups and, and row based movements so there is a difference I, that I am feeling at the moment. It was nice today, actually, funnily enough, as of recording this. I was doing bicep curls this morning in the gym just to see what the difference was compared to where I was before. And there was mm. a big difference. And I realized that that in itself can, or has been a limiting factor getting back into training the last couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, not something we'd prioritize all the time. But, again, like a lot of things, it does have its place. You know, <laughs> most things can complement a more holistic view of training just not zumba yeah yeah just not just not zumba you know what i was listening to a podcast the other day right and apparently where zumba actually makes all its money is selling the tracks to trainers for the classes oh what like licensing yeah 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 and you would have thought it was more on like um delivering a good service and product yeah you'd hope oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah basically yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, that was a good little punchline there. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's like yeah, a, it's, it's like, like a personal trainer making more money from selling supplements than actually training. Yeah, yeah, and it's not to put any uh, any kind of uh, hate on Herbalife or, or anything like that, you know. But it's just uh, like focus on what you you're 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 doing rather than selling something on the side to, <laughs> to make it buy. Like, did I ever tell you my the Herbalife experience that I had? Well, no. it wasn't. It wasn't a direct experience, but it just really shocked me because I didn't really know how herbal life coaches or trainers or whatever they are go about their business. I didn't really, you know, is it like house calls and things like that? So you started stalking one. No, <laughs> yeah, I started following one around. No, I was just <laughs> randomly sat in Costa Coffee at Tottenham Hale train station uh, at one point. I was just it was a good halfway point for me to meet someone, so I got there early and I was just sat there killing time just uh, doing some emails and I noticed these two guys in like herbal life jackets on the table next to me and I thought oh, okay they're just you know obviously here for a coffee and you know they're, they're, one's maybe a regional boss of the other one who knows whatever they're just having a meeting and some other guy comes in joins them and he was 
clearly not a herbal life guy. He was looked a bit overweight. And he sat down at the table and I'm just watching this whole interchange occur and then they're talking, they start doing forms with him and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I wonder where this is going. And then one of them whipped out like some body fat scales and calipers and started doing like physical well, assessments on him in the middle well, of the doing pinch tests. And yeah, that. like did a, um, I can't remember if they're doing pinch tests, but they definitely had a, uh, an electrical impedance uh scale so they got the oh, scale right. out and they pulled up the handles and the guy's there barefoot in the middle of costa with his you know basically luckily they kept they let, let him keep his shirt and his trousers on but you know he luckily stripped he, off he remembered not to wear his g-string that day it was like this full-on medical assessment happening in costa now i'm not adverse to you know sitting down and having a, a face-to-face with, with a client in a coffee shop you know and have a conversation with them and potentially even do some written forms of assessment but it was like I just thought to myself, would I do a functional movement analysis with someone in Costa Coffee? <laughs> would, I, you know, would someone start be asking, willing to? Like, I, yeah, I'm, like I'm, if I I'm said all to right someone, because I'm, I've never really been that fat, so I'm all right for people doing a little pinch test, the old skin fold test on me. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of clients wouldn't be too happy with that, like, or they wouldn't be comfortable with that, you know? Well, I was just very surprised. Like, I mean, obviously, the guy was... A willing participant he'd obviously said yes i will meet you in costa coffee and we can do the assessment surely and drop something in his drink <laughs> yeah yeah some, yeah take this cappuccino we've prepared it for you well exactly it, you know <laughs> i'm pretty sure he was consenting to you know everything that was happening but i just the fact that it was even and look you never know the full extent of the circumstances by which this encounter occurred but to offer it as, uh, okay, well, let's meet in Costa Coffee and I may I should take a few clothes off and take your shoes off and get on a scale where I'm going to assess your body fat in front of, you know, the, the general public. A few it, calendar photos. Just, yeah, it, it just, there was something about it that I thought, this, while the guy may be fully into this and, you know, he's given his, his permission to do it, I don't think that's a question you want to ask. I don't think you want to put someone in that position where, you know, you say, well, look, the only way we're going to be able to do this is if you come and meet us in the coffee shop and, and do that in front of everyone. I thought, fair play, the guy was quite brave to do it because, you know, there's a lot of people that would be very intimidated by that. But, uh, yeah, that was my ex- my one and only real experience of herbal life coaching was yeah. uh, seeing that unfold in front of me. That's pretty, uh, <laughs> that's just funny, man. I can just imagine it all going down. I'd have been like, it'd have been just total disbelief for me. I'd have been like, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> well, it was quite distracting because the guy I, I met for a coffee, he he was he turned up after, you know, only about five minutes into this interchange. So he's talking to me and we're, I'm trying and to have this conversation. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help but watch what's going on over there. I find it just quite amu- well, amusing in terms of the fact that this is you know, has even been an option. But yeah. Um, it's yeah. a bit obscure, isn't it? Do you yeah. reckon they pick up more people, more people decide to herb life because they're doing skin full tests at the coffee shop? Maybe. Maybe like it's like an affiliate program with Costa Coffee or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe Costa are actually Herbalife ambassadors. Maybe. Who? <laughs> and they were actually Costa employees with Herbalife jackets on. I think I'm, I'm convinced that one day somewhere in the future you're just going to have everything under one roof you know i know they talk about you know obviously we do have shopping malls and and things like that where you know you can actually have dentist practices and doctors and cinemas and anything you like in in one particular space but you know you've now got like argos stores popping up in home base stores and i was just like how many more things one big hive exactly it's gonna be one company that and you know you can argue that's and i'm not going to go on a rant about corporate culture and globalization and, and whatnot but you do start to see like bigger companies eventually buy up the smaller companies and eventually one company is just going to get so big that it's just going to buy up everything and it's just going to be one bland faceless place where you can buy all your home google your food you can go to yeah exactly it's just <laughs> google google is going to own everything it's, have you, know, you seen the uh, the amazon uh, stores that they uh, i saw advertised on facebook the other day right what physical it, stores yeah yeah and it's like basically like tesco but you 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 come in you swipe your phone in like you sign into your amazon account mm. and then i don't know exactly how it does it but you go around you pick all your food up off the shelf and that and it adds it to your cart in amazon then you check out and it auto pays to amazon Okay. So it's just like your, your standard kind of gym barrier thing to get in where you just swipe your card and walk the, the wheelie arm sticks. Mm. But uh, it's a shop. Okay. That's Doesn't... pretty interesting. But all I think is like, who stacks the shelves? Robots. 
a bunch of drones, floating arm drones, yep. flow around and stick all the sandwiches on the, uh, on the thing. Yeah, it's Skynet. Clearly. Yeah, Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, though. Like it does. I think that's a really, really powerful, and I'm going to go off one again here, so be prepared. Go and get yourself a cup of tea if you like. I think it's actually a really powerful analogy for what's happening a lot with online everything, you know, business, training, whatnot. This idea, I think, permeating it's certainly how you and i connected you know with the passion for building or taking what you do offline online and reaching more people and you know broadening out your your sort of reach so to speak and obviously you know amazon was a perfect example of hey you don't need to go out shopping anymore we can you can buy everything you need in one place and have it delivered direct to your door and i'm having those conversations with people now about how they just do all their shopping for christmas online and they're all done and they didn't have to one step foot in a store which i know for a lot of guys that's like brilliant heaven. that's heaven you know there's i don't know many men that really really deeply enjoy going around the shops with the crowds trying to find stuff you know we're very direct shoppers we like to find something we want go and pick it up leave and then get it done and then go and eat and, <laughs> and then go and eat yeah it's true though isn't it like that's and then for me like the first consideration call to set up a coaching session with them but it's true that my first consideration when i get out shopping is like right okay how soon before lunch you know, how quickly can we get through this first bit before I can get to somewhere I can actually eat or maybe have a coffee. Yeah. Either, either or. But anyway, the Amazon now, you know, they were the archetypal example of this is the online world now. Like you're not going to need high street shopping anymore. You know, everything's going to be done online and obviously other stores really kind of up their game in terms of online shopping, you know, getting returns back and forth, you know, really, really quick and getting stuff out you know, pronto to people so that they weren't going elsewhere for the the similar sort of products because it opened up the marketplace massively. People weren't able to only buy things that were on their local high street. They could Mm. go much broader. So online shopping became a bigger thing. Now you've got Amazon creating physical stores. (laughs) I know, it's it's brilliant, isn't it? (laughs) It's great, but I think it's, it's, it's fantastic because it just, you know, take that example and everything else, you know, almost using the Herbalife guys as a bit of an example. If you run an online business, you know, and this is something that comes up by a lot of very good people who have very successful online business, try and make whatever interaction, whatever relationship you've established with a customer or prospective customer, try and take it offline as quickly as you can. Every relationship you can, like everyone I've connected with online that I thought this is someone I clearly align with, resonate with, I'll try and get on a Skype call where I can at least see their face and have a Hmm. human conversation rather than just pinging messages back and forth. You know, if I'm going to work with someone, whether it's as a client or a business partner, a collaborator, whatever it might be in any respect, I want that, I want there to be a human element to it still. You know, yeah. I think that's so, so important that people rely so heavily on this belief that, you know, well, as soon as I've got a website, you know, or anything I'm doing online, you know, and if you're looking for coaches or people to guide you and mentor you, you know, look for someone that actually wants to create a human relationship, not just one done through email and messaging. You know, someone wants to meet you in person whenever they can, maybe not to do body fat assessment in Costa, but certainly to, you know, establish a, a real human connection as well. I think that's really, really valuable. People still value physical experiences. Yeah, definitely. It's more palpable, isn't it? It's real. Yeah, definitely. And it's because we're physical creatures and that, you know, feeds back nicely into training again because you know that's something it's about never... time we spoke about it <laughs> well we're never going to lose that are we we're never going to lose that connection to physical desire on every level now i'm not going to go yeah. into too many tangents on that but no we're too we are physical yeah. creatures until we are all just brains in jars or you know some consciousness that's been uploaded and created in a you know ai universe you know when skynet finally does take over uh, and isn't just stacking shelves in, in Amazon 2018 stores, <laughs> you know once that until that becomes a reality we're still flesh and blood physical entities and we respect and value physical experience physical connection you know whether that's internal or external you know we Mm. want to be connected within ourselves we want to feel our bodies we want to connect on every possible level and training does that magnificently because that's again talking about culture that's where we're dangerously off kilter now it's not just about people being obese and sick and unhealthy and you know being at risk of lifestyle diseases and whatnot it's actually just this lack of connection people have to themselves on a physical level and that manifests itself onto a mental level people are hugely distracted in their own minds you know hence why meditation is a good thing and disconnected from other things around them you know the more things i think we can kind of pull back a little bit from the ether you know the the internet at large make things more physical i think is going to be more powerful you know i think it's a great analogy 
Yeah. Which, actually, funnily enough, guys, we are going to be taking part in, in the new year. We're going to start doing some uh, little workshops or some kind of group coaching, me and Chris together, uh, preferably in the nude, but we'll see how, uh, how good we get. Where did that come from? What, the nude bit? In I the thought nude. it was just obvious, wasn't it? Well, at least like a Speedo. Well, I mean, at most, you mean... Is this in Costa Coffee or is this out? No, we'll do it outside in the oh, okay. in the open air. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. We might we might even paint Herbalife on our bellies, <laughs> just so you know who, who, who we're representing. <laughs> I'm so glad you said bellies. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say cocks. <laughs> no, but you just did. So uh, we we're know, doing right? so well. This is this is quite a clean episode. No, uh, it wasn't. If you listen to my half of it, it wasn't that clean. I don't think. Oh, is it not? Okay. No. Anyway, we earn our explicit stripes. But seriously, guys, we are going to be doing some uh, little workshop things. Um, we haven't got any dates or anything set up yet, uh, but we want to start doing them uh, to meet you guys, to get involved with uh, with you guys and help you out. You know, uh, it's. I mean, it, it sure it'd be fun for us and we can have a good laugh and maybe make a cool video all, all together with a big group of everyone doing some crazy shit. But um, it's for your benefit, not for ours. It's for you guys to, to get a, a head up, a heel up, a hoof up, a foot up, a whatever you want to get up, except for your cocks. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then we're, we're going to help you help you get get into bodyweight training, get uh, help you hit your goals and stuff one on one. Well, not one on one, but one on several or two, two on, on several. On yeah, we're going to Eiffel Tower <laughs> you in the park. <laughs> two, two on several. Like Which is that. why you also need to turn up naked. We're going to have a couple of pinch chest testers. We're going to grab hold of a few things. And we're going to make you swing around like a swinger, like a good swinger should. The king of the swingers. And that's it. That's the Jungle VIP advertising uh, segment. Now we're going to get back on to body weight training and conditioning. So... <laughs> So, so Chris, um, what uh, what are you what do you what have you got planned for the next kind of uh, the next kind of week? What have you got planned for your next couple of training sessions? What are your goals? What are you working on? Well, to be honest, the up until Christmas, because obviously it's you know pretty manic. I've got quite a lot going on on a business level as well. A uh, new website and a new coaching program and whatnot that I'm Woo! due to be launching in the new year. Yeah, exciting times, but just means I'm you know head down in in copywriting and product creation and development and recording audio and video and things like that so it's good fun but uh, lots of stuff going on so training really is just a bit of maintenance a bit of you know getting back to the standard that I was before so as I mentioned in recent episodes you know big focus has been my snatch work so getting back under the bar a little bit more frequently you know drilling down into my overhead squat strength so that I can get used to just holding the weight above my head once I can actually throw it up there so just breaking down some component parts getting my deadlift and high pulls back on points so being able to lift a significant amount of weight from the floor and, and drive it up to shoulder height and then equally in the overhead squat being able to catch it and hold it and uh, get down deep so I was doing some great deep squats this morning actually which were a lot of fun mm. you know getting full hip flexion nice tidy postural positions as well and um, really feeling it in my core that one like we've talked about before you know the core kicking in on larger compound movements when it's not the focus of the movement but obviously when you're heavy loading and you're doing things correctly more often than not that's where you're going to feel a lot of the effort going on as well so that was kind of a bit of a shock to the system just getting yeah. used to holding that bar on my back in a deep position again which was yeah it was a lot of fun so yeah snatch work is just the ongoing battle i'm going to start throwing in some clean and jerks as well just to drive the power yeah so uh yeah <laughs> Um, what about clean and snatches? You mixing them in? <laughs> this is going to be an ongoing joke. This clean and snatch thing. Yes, it's yes. so funny, man. <laughs> so um, no, I won't be cleaning and snatching. Um, although it's an interesting uh, conversation as to whether or not you can actually work those two things simultaneously within a similar session. You know, one very light loading, almost technique based, just to kind of use as active recovery. And, Probably could uh, with like a like a thirty kilo or something. Yeah, just something you know to keep you keep you warm in between sets particularly <laughs> particularly at this time of year. 30, 30 kilo clean and snatches yes indeed so yeah that's that's a big focus but i would like to get my my handstand work going again you know just tight i mean i don't have a particularly good handstand uh technique so a handstand's an ongoing process though man and like you being all busy is. doing your programming stuff as well that's a good time to mm -hmm. be to work on like those that skill development and that aspect of it because although it doesn't take a lot of 
um, it doesn't take a lot of strength mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a lot of time either to do and you can do them anywhere you can do them at home so when you have your little toilet break or whatever just handstand back mm -hmm. you know handstand and practice uh, those little things I've been I've been going into my skills cycle now because I've just finished up my strength one mm -hmm. so I've been working specifically like uh, like a progressive skill development so i've been doing like planche holds and progressions and stuff on on the rings as well because it's on the rings that i need to get my planche in not on the floor sure. um i've been doing lots of uh with my handstands what i've been trying to do is intentionally off balance myself in different ways so that um because my holds are very stable now well compared to how they were like i can i can easily do like a 10 15 20 second handstand so what I'm trying to do is off-balance myself to to push the limits and the boundaries of my control to increase that margin of um, maneuverability within that position while still holding it. I've been working on my hollow backs, which is like a cross between a handstand and a bridge. So you handstand and then you bend your, you flex your back like in a bridge and uh, so your legs kind of stick out the wrong way at 90 degrees. Right. And they've been progressing very nicely, you know, um, what, uh, and, and stuff, stuff like that, like coordination, control, you know, um, kind of uh, dyna this kind of dynamic tension idea. And I don't mean dynamic tension like push-ups, dynamic tension, mm -hmm. I mean, like isometric control and movement within isometric exercises like um going from front lever to straddle to front lever to straddle to front lever, you know and just doing like simple leg um extensions what is it a uh, lateral extension in it out the side so i'm yes. doing these like s these switches between uh, this lateral extension within a front lever to a impr improve the hold times of my front lever but also to improve like that strength and and coordination within like my all my hip flexors around the hip around that plane of movement because we don't move a lot on the frontal plane we do a lot on the sagittal plane as in forwards and backwards but not kind of side to side mm -hmm. so uh, that uh, has done wonders for like my obliques and stuff like that my uh, my hip flexors my adductors my abductors the other ductors, the inductors and the outductors <laughs> <laughs> all, all the ductors <laughs> yeah so if you need any ducting done in your house, like we can do that. We can arrange for someone to come over at a pretty good day rate. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a really good point, actually. Just doing, like we talked about before, doing things that are generally outside of your comfort zone more often than not are a great idea because we all end up, always end up favoring certain exercises, mm. certain positions, whatever they may be. We sort of stay where we're comfortable. And it's almost like we forget that at some point in the past they weren't that comfortable and we got to a certain level. But then we kind of want to live in that little bubble for a while. You know, mm. we feel quite safe there. And doing things like you say, just thinking even in terms of just movement planes, you know, very, very simplistically frontal, sagittal and, and transverse. So moving side to side, moving forward and back or rotating the body, you know, there, that's a very simple way of breaking things down and looking at your training and saying, well, how much of any of those am I doing? And for a lot of people, it tends to be very... You more know, very, sagittal less rotation massively and less frontal as well you know just very much in a straight line out in front or just you know up and down whatever rather than doing any sort of lateral work like you were saying you know there's going to create some sort of abduction and adduction through the hips you know it's going to open the body up a little bit more stop people getting tight in areas which just aren't being utilized as much as they can and that's mm. the thing if you think in a real world context if we were still living out in the natural environment you know we'd be moving our body in all different types of ways under some sort of load whether it's just body weight or carrying things up and down mountains or across plains or you know through streams or you know uneven terrain as well you know we're very f restricted now by a lot of our movement just generally walking around is on very flat ground and that's actually not really what our bodies are designed for they're used to kind of having to move maneuver over different areas you know kind of working side to side sometimes frontally sometimes going very laterally altogether so if you're not getting that in your everyday life then you need to kind of implement it into your training. I mean, you should be doing that anyway, but you know, really trying to focus in on that because a lot of your general day-to-day -day movement is very sagittal, is very frontal. Is, uh, sorry, it's very sagittal, is very moving in one particular linear direction, forwards or backwards. So trying to implement those things will have a massive carryover. You know, mm. one thing like in the gym, doing some sort of loaded rotations, wood chops off of a cable. You know, c there's something that a lot of people just don't ever think to do. Yeah, 
because they are hard they're, they're challenging and they, from a technique perspective they can take a little bit of extra work yeah and, and so they, the stability in that movement as well can be it's surprising like uh, how much you need to kind of brace yourself with your legs oh massively well it's like it's a whole body you know doing it to a, an optimal load an optimal intensity the amount of bracing that has to go on through so much of the body you know what's happening in terms of your spinal rotation you know the engagement through your core musculature particularly the obliques so much happening you know in that one simple move and that's not even mixing it up and doing sort of high to low or low to high base movements so it's certainly something if i'm being completely honest i don't do enough of and mm. i'll, I'll g- great you know generally program it for other people yeah and i myself avoid it <laughs> so yeah not well to be honest it can take a little bit of time you know because the nature of the movement it's single sides it's unilateral and if you're doing sort of 10 to 15 repetitions on that i, like, I do really enjoy doing low reps that like are really heavy and trying to get the rotation out but if you're doing higher reps it can just because it's quite a big complex movement the time under tension the time under load mm. is quite long so it, it takes up a large chunk of your your training uh, training time on any given yeah. day that you're doing it so personally I, I maybe go for slightly sort of quicker fixes you know if i'm being completely honest but well have you tried some of the body weight variations of it because in calisthenics it can be you, you you don't really have that kind of um upper body kind of rotation i uh, it's not as easy to implement that type of movement as it is when you're loading because you can easily just hold something and start turning mm. but with body weight you can do like um you can do like a, a hanging half lever or an l sit mm. uh, just hanging from the bar and then do like twist your your legs keep your legs out piked and then turn 90 degrees tap the right support come back 180 tap the left support and you can kind of almost do like back and forth like that for reps Mm. and that does your obliques it does your wrists you feel it in your shoulders your back like your core obviously you you probably get some cramping in your quads or your hip flexors because Mm. just holding that position is beastly Mm. and uh, it's it's great but it doesn't take uh, as much uh, time in your workout as it does if you're doing your loaded kind of uh, wood choppers and stuff like that another one you can do if you can do like tuck uh, front levers or something like that you can do wipers which are the same kind of principle that kind of mm. l-sit rotation yeah but you're holding your body your trunk horizontal to the ground in that kind of front lever position with your legs uh fully extended mm. upwards and then you go in left to right left to right like uh, like windscreen wipers yeah they're they're also really good if you yeah, if no, you can get them points. in yeah no definitely good examples and uh yeah i think to be honest maybe in january i'll just put all of them in for fun <laughs> just give me something to really think about but it's uh it can yeah like we've mentioned previously it can be a real limiting factor when you're not paying some attention in you know as at least every other cycle of training you know every four week should we say cycle just to get some sort of rotational work and i think some sort of rotation plays a big part in the gym sometimes you know you can throw in depending on what sort of facility you're using throw in some sort of sledgehammer and, and tire work you know that can be quite a lot of fun as well just yeah. sort of heavy uh, sledgehammer hitting a hit a tire very simplistically you know it's a real kind of wood just turn chopping. your head out to the side so you don't ping back and smack yourself in the face <laughs> with it <laughs> yes exactly I've, I've seen some horrible things in my time seen some where... awesome fail videos not of people doing that in the gym but like on the old uh the old uh sledgehammer like kind of what is it like the old carnival thing where the, the thing pings oh, yeah, up yeah. and hits the bell like you've seen so many of them just bashing themselves in the face yeah there's some classics <laughs> out there but in a gym setting yeah you can see some people who just lack spatial awareness walking straight behind someone who's just about to swing a, a sledgehammer over the, the top and you just think oh there's only one way this is going <laughs> <laughs> broken jaw yeah so um yeah definitely uh, mix it up get those rotational base work yeah uh, uh, rotational base drills in because you know, another thing i've been valuable. doing so, go on no, no, they, they are highly valuable sorry i didn't mean to cut you off then another thing i've been doing recently which kind of ties into this whole rotational programming uh is the last kind of week I, i've been starting to learn circles on the pommel horse oh nice okay and that's like i think in no, like break really dancing hard. it's called flaring yeah. and it's basically where you're like uh you got your hands supported and you're swinging you're, you're just swinging round round and round and round and round like a like a propeller and yeah so i've been learning that and i i, I could never do it before uh and i i kind of put it off and just thought i was like oh fuck it do you know what i mean let's not worry about that i can focus on other skills for gymnastics mm. but i came back to it last week and uh i uh, 
Monday I couldn't do them. And I tried them at the end of the session and aside from really hurting my forearms because you're taking a lot of that rotational uh, stabilization and pressure on your wrists mm -hmm. because your arms are going to be straight. Uh, that, yeah, that hurt a lot. But I found in a couple of goes I could get one or two rotations quite nicely. And then I came back to it Wednesday and I could do three rotations. Nice. And then, yeah, yeah, so it's like now I feel like today is the following Wednesday, I feel like I'm going to get like five rotations in, nice. you know? So I'll, I'll put up a little video of like these kind of, this stage as a progression of me trying on different days so you can see like how my form's improved and how my um, kind of circling abilities improve because it's like that skill in itself is really relevant to like planche training, uh, ring stuff and, and, and loads of other kind of um, inversion kind of training. That's proper yoga term, isn't it? Inversion training. Yeah, yeah. But like, oh man, that kind of cringed even saying it. But it's true. Like handstand stability, uh, you, you know, it's, it all ties into that. There's a lot of upper body stability strength and rotation kind of counteracting and all this other stuff that's going on that it's really difficult to train otherwise, you know. Mm. And that is really good. It's really, really good. And I really want to get them. Now I've had this little taste that I, I want them. I, I want to be able to do some beastly circles on the pommel horse and just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, I mean, for me, great, for me it's skill. all about little skills I can intimidate people with in competitions. <laughs> <You know? laughs> also, it's, it's, it's one of those ones that looks like a lot of fun as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. If you can actually perfect that, it just looks really enjoyable. Like being a kid, just running around and kind of being quite carefree and just doing something that's really kind of exciting and mm. yeah just liberating in a lot of respects as well so well yeah, once I, I can just... once I can get this in a pike position with my legs together I want to do it straddled because I think that's where it looks really cool yeah. you know because your legs are kind of flinging around all over the place in this crazy like a uh, pattern what was that thing that you used to have when you were a kid spirograph can you remember that uh, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, that. yeah. Oh, so God. it's like wow. it's like some crazy spirograph pattern you're painting with your legs. So imagine yeah. if you did it in the dark and you just stuck these two little torches to your toes, and imagine like how crazy light light photos you could get. You know when they do when they write their name and shit. You could have crazy ones if you doing flaring or circles on like a. I've been doing it on a mushroom, not on the actual pommel horse, because you need to be able to get your hands in the same position every time before you can grab onto those bloody handles. Yeah. And uh, imagine just doing it on there with your legs. <laughs> that would be mad. <laughs> I like the sound effects. Thanks for that. Yeah, life's better with sound effects. Yeah, life's better with sound. Um, okay, cool. That sounds exciting. I look forward to seeing how that, that transpires. Mm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll put one of them up as well. Yeah. Um, cool. Right, I, th I feel like we're getting to the end of it now, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm bored now, so should we uh, call it a day? Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> No, just kidding. I, I could I could do this for hours yet, yeah, but um, yeah, safe. even even without talking about Netflix, I could still chat about this stuff for ages, you know. Exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah. yeah, should we uh, should we call it a day there? Because you know, if people are still with us at this point, they may be thinking, yeah, shut it down now, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So, um, guys, that's about it. <laughs> See you later, bye. <laughs> Yeah. No, uh, As always, guys, if you like what you've heard today, please hold do on, hold on, hold on. Oh, come on! Don't what? get ahead of yourself. Rock, paper, scissors for the outro. Oh, okay. We're doing this every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I tell you what. You <laughs> no, know no, what? no, it's fine. Okay, come on, no, come on. This, this is our thing. The, no wild cards. All right. Yeah, no, it's all right. Okay, no, as long as I, as long as I understand the tradition now. You know we're what seven episodes in or so eight it's episodes just, in so this it's just now. become kind of fun to do i think uh, it makes it a bit more exciting okay do you know what so remember from last week i i, I brought in the nuclear arsenal i brought, brought in nuclear bomb yeah we should maybe just do rock paper scissor but that's what you, i said no wild cards no no but i say do wild cards but you've then got we've then got to decide whether the wild card was applicable to beat the you can still have a rock paper scissor but like you could say hamster <laughs> You know, and the hamster would and eat the paper. And you can argue, yeah, whether or not the hamster would beat the rock. Well, exactly. Well, it's unlikely, <laughs> isn't it? But it, well, it might beat paper because it would eat the paper. Yeah, yeah. And you might also give it a nice snazzy haircut with the scissors. Yeah, I think that that's... Yeah. Yes, let's just say yes. So we'll stick with snazzy haircut, all right? It could get a lot more brutal otherwise. Yeah, so we've got, you've got to think of something. This is an animal-friendly podcast. 
Indeed it is, yes. Uh, We're both I, pretty much vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I'm, I've been... I, I, absolutely been thriving at the moment i think on this predominantly plant-based diet yeah i'm really looking forward to actually going full-blown with it and sort of seeing if that really does work i'm really happy with how i've progressed it down you know very much eliminated things very progressively yeah and yeah it's working working great you know no dairy no meat um or very little meat a little bit of fish yeah that's uh, awesome exciting times ahead because uh, it's it's feeling pretty good lots of energy uh, sleeping fantastically um, just the only, the only thing is for me that the hard measure is that you know the energy in the gym because I've not been training much. That's obviously one thing. Where, yes, you can't really tell. Yeah, I need to sort of give it another sort of month or so of getting back up to sort of my typical sort of energy levels with that and making mm. sure that I f- still feel good on those. I mean, I, the, to be honest, the session I had today, you know, was awesome. You know, I felt really strong, felt really good. Yeah, uh, probably the best one yet out of the last sort of three weeks of being fully back on it. So uh, yeah. You know, looking forward I've, uh, to. I, I've found since uh, cutting out or cutting off meat, um, I've I've always found I've had more energy, like for my workouts, mm. compared to when I first started doing weight training and when I first started going down the gym. Mm. When, um, but I think that's more to do with sleep, my, my sleep personally, than it mm. was to anything else. Because at the time I was getting terrible, terrible sleep, like four four hours a night and stuff like that, and. Mm. Uh, just really, so I think that had a lot to do with it. But I found since I've been eating plants, like uh, since they've been the main stay, you know, the uh, the figure point in my diet, that uh, I've always had energy. I've never really, I've never really worried about that too much. No, it's yes. more hangovers that stop me from doing stuff. Like if I, if I do go out for a drink with my mates or something, every like occasionally, you know, it's not not a common occurrence. It's like maybe once a month or every other month or something. But mm. when that happens, that usually I feel that so much that I just it makes me suffer because I can't, I physically cannot do the that amount of that volume of work that I did just the night before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's not because of like doms you know your muscle soreness or anything like that is because of the alcohol mm. no. yeah definitely it's funny actually drinking that you know i've done my fair share of drinking in the past it's funny I'm, drinking <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm no i'm no saint but, but now i drink i drink so little i'm not teetotal and i'm, I'm not advocating that people should be i think mm. some people should be because they just have that addictive personality yeah uh, but you know, in my case, sometimes I'll have a glass of wine with dinner or, you know, certain meals. Like, I love a, a Cobra beer with a curry. Like, I just can't beat it. There's something about the Christmas of that. that I think beer. it's just, I think it's just the environment. You know what I mean? You're just used to having, when you go I, out for a curry, a real, like, it, Cobra's a, what they have. <laughs> no, it's a, it is a taste thing. I know it is, you know, the. I, th- I believe the intention of that beer was to complement spicy food. So it's um but anyway like yeah whatever it is whether it's sort of habit or whether it is actually taste whatever the reason it's still enjoyable so I, yeah I, yeah oh, i'm not if disputing I'd, that don't know if i'd ever give up on that but uh yeah i go out now and i'll have a i'll have drinks with people and again same as you it's very infrequent these days but i find that i get about halfway through my second beer and bear in mind i generally drink bottles these days i'll get like a corona or a soul or a peroni or something yeah i drink by the half pint rather than the full pint well i just i just enjoy them out of bottles they just it just tastes cleaner than you know coming off a, a pint you know it's very rare nowadays that i drink a pint and actually think that Do tastes you know what really it smells nice. like though what next week i'm going to test you have at some point this week have a bottle of beer mm. and when you crack it open mm. Just have a think about what it smells like. That initial opening smell. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, try, I'll try and have a beer this weekend. And uh, Just one? Yeah, just the one. Yeah, but yeah. My, my point was that, you know, I get about halfway through that second bottle. And normally, to be honest, it takes me twice as long to get through that, sec- you know, those, those, that bottle and a half as it ever used to. And I get yeah. to that point, I'm like, I'm kind of done. Like, I yeah. I really just don't want any more. And I'm quite happy at that point more often than not just to drink you know get a soda water and lime or just a glass of water or, or whatever and kind of sit and chat because i've kind of had my little beer buzz yeah, yeah you've had your little boisterous boost yeah exactly i don't need any more than that you know because again i don't drink that much so it mm. doesn't take me much to kind of get that little feel good hit you know and i think that's great you know that little minimum effective dose of anything like beer you know it's like it's a nootropic. <laughs> it's, cr- it's great. It gives me a little lift. And I'm like, okay, now I'm just happy to stand and chat. And if I want to drink, I'll probably just get a water or something just to, yeah. to keep myself fresh. Uh, but anyway, 
it's it is funny because um yeah it's it's something that's just kind of happened naturally so mm. in your case maybe that will be the same who knows yeah yeah uh, when, you're, when you're old like me <laughs> you only grow old because you stop playing mate don't matter how close to 70 you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> next year bring it on bring uh, it on 70 uh, next year <laughs> <laughs> not quite uh, right anyway so, so rock, paper scissors then rock, yeah paper scissors wild cool. cards are live yeah okay after three four ready three two one rock kettle kettle yep i think a rock could beat a kettle wait hang on we're wild carding and you still pick rock yeah <laughs> i thought like it's the first time we officially do wild cards and he's going to pick something exciting well, no, because I thought the wild cards weren't going to be every time. I thought they were just going to be every now and then. No, no, I said, I, I said they're, if they are live as of now. So you can still use traditional ones. Yeah. And then, you know, some things, you know, if you're going to pick tank and, you know, nuclear bomb and machine gun every week, then, you know. It's kind of cheating. We're going to have to up the ante a little bit. So I'm just thinking of household appliances. And it's just because I'm... <laughs> household appliances. <laughs> just because I'm near my kitchen at the moment. And the first thing I saw was kettle. So I thought... I was just thinking household appliances. <laughs> well, I just thought, you know, kettle, boiling water. You know, you could argue the toss about that is effective against certain things. But you just then just go and kill all the fun and... Play rock. <laughs> Why? Because I win. <laughs> well, I don't know, actually. I, well, let's, let's debate that then. So I'd, I would probably have to give it to you and say rock would beat kettle. I, I think rock, rock would smash kettle and the boiling water that the kettle just, has doesn't really harm the rock, does it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It may erode it over time, but that's a long period of time, by which time the, the rock has completely destroyed the kettle. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, cool. Where where are we going? Seriously? No, no, we're we're deciding who does the outro. This is fine. <laughs> okay, well it's all it's yours then. There you go. You okay, win. cool. So ha- stand by though, just in case I fuck it up. Right, guys. So that is all for this week. Um, it was quite a rambly episode. We touched on a lot of different topics. Not too much about training so much, but that's okay. I think there's uh, quite a lot. Actually, yeah, there kind of was, wasn't there? Yeah, we, we tend to bring it back eventually, and this is more than lifting. You know, you know what? Are. Right, what we do is we start off talking about training. Then we go off and just talk about something else for 40 minutes. And then at the end, we're like, right, do some training quick. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so blah, 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 blah. Press ups, goodbye. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> it's a great format for a show, I think. <laughs> Guys, if you do like what you hear, please subscribe, leave a rating and review. Send us a bit of love. Um, as Chris said, we're not going to come and hug you and kiss you. It's all very anonymous. I love that line. <laughs> that was a total accident. You said that it was so good. And, but we, uh, we might come and find you on the tube and hold your hand up. Your skull, we so. might. We might. Yeah, we might come and uh, <clears throat> we might serenade you on the tube or somewhere else for that matter. You know, it could be anywhere on the bus. Uh, down the swimming pool, even at the gym. If some random guy in, approaches in you and starts singing uh, Human Nature, then you know it's probably one of us two. <laughs> <laughs> that could be um, like a cool little competition, couldn't it? What? That we just have to go out and find someone and randomly sing and hope that they listen to this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, people, it's like, it's, well, no, I was going to use oh, a really bad example. Speaking of which, guys, shout outs to all our Bulgarian listeners. Oh yeah. yeah! Well, yeah, that's that was kind of a turn up that we've got like tons of people that seem to be tuning in from Bulgaria. Everyone in Bulgaria who likes bodyweight training, you are awesome. You rock! Seriously, yeah. we love Bulgaria. I've always, I've never been to Bulgaria. I'm desperate to go because apparently I, the skiing there is brilliant and it's just a really lovely country. Yeah, yeah. I've, heard I, lots I've of never things. been there, but I've heard good things. I know a couple of people from Bulgaria. Um, I'm going to leave it there so we don't go off on a tangent again. Oh, no, but, I think we... No, it's just cool. I actually used to work with a guy from Bulgaria, and he was rock hard. Like, he was... It was great. We used to work with two boxers. He was one of them, and he was pretty much, I'd say, maybe not quite heavyweight, certainly, you know, solid enough to be a cruiser. And this other guy who was more sort of, like, welterweight, you know, and he was quick. Uh, but this other guy just had a big big right you know right hand and yeah. you're watching they'd spar sometimes just for fun and we'd kind of sit and watch them in the gym and you know the, the, the fast guy he was quick and he was jabbing and he was working around and getting in these little shots and eventually and it was that like, guy it was, goes thump it was just like watching <laughs> Ivan, Ivan Drago in like the Rocky where he's just or, or like Klitschko just walking around with his right arm up in the air 
just like following this guy around. <laughs> <laughs> just and he knew this other guy was like, God, if if he doesn't, you know, if I don't get a good couple more blows in, you know, then if I don't, know. if I stop, I'm fucked. Exactly. Like. <laughs> if I stop moving, I'm screwed. If he gets me in a corner and that thing hits me, so uh, yeah, it was quite fun. But uh, he was a cool guy, and so yeah, my. Uh, my experience of Bulgarians is generally pretty cool, apart from Bulgarian split squats. Which I was going to say they've fun. got their own training moves as well, which is pretty fancy. I think it's awesome that all these like horrible or more extreme versions of particular exercises all get like Eastern European names. It's because they're all monsters out there. The calisthenics community in Eastern Europe is fucking disgusting. Like everyone's amazing at all this kind of shit, like crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which makes it even <laughs> funnier that they're listening to us, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guys, though, seriously, if you're from Bulgaria, lots of love. Um, connect with us on Instagram or anywhere else in the world. If you're not from Bulgaria, also connect with us. You know, get hold of us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, still around, um, and email us. You know, leave us a comment, a rate, and a review. Check out the websites. Uh, if you're interested in the workshops, if you're from around London and you're interested in doing some workshops with us or anywhere else in the UK if you want to travel, um, we'd also appreciate that. Uh, just get on the website, send me an email or Chris and just say you're interested and we'll put you on a little waiting list. We don't have like a, a sign up page or anything for it at the moment because we've literally only discussed it today. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that about covers it. Oh yeah, if you're a girl, Add me on Snapchat. <laughs> I always, I like dropping that in now. But it's not that I get a lot of people adding me on Snapchat, but it's just quite fun, I think. That fun little joke. Um, check out the episode show notes for details on the exercises, the workouts, the all, all the uh, people, uh, other people and websites we've talked about. Uh, check it out would be morethanlifting.com slash episode number eight for this episode. So episode slash episode eight um, any other episode number, just fill that, uh, fill in the blank, you know? Chris, mate, you just do the outro, man, because I'm shit at it. <laughs> so, so I'll just let you do it. <laughs> how are you going to edit that one in that we've just done it? with rock paper scissor and now you're doing it and I'm doing it and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have that bit where I'm like oh Chris I keep fucking it up mate you just do it okay. <laughs> I'm just going to leave right. that in there fine okay cool so <laughs> so we'll go from here yeah right yeah, Three, go, go, two, go. One. so guys yes as we've already said if you like what we heard subscribe rate review share it around tell all your friends family whatever give the gift of more than lifting at Christmas and you know send someone a link as a Christmas present because let's be honest it's better than the socks you were going to buy them uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that will do us for today's episode Reese, anything else to add? no 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 that's everything cool yeah so guys uh, come get in touch send us questions feedback just reach out connect share the love find us on uh, various social media platforms as more than anything or coach thatch and otherwise we'll leave it there for today so it's goodbye from me and from me as well keep in touch with yourselves and um, yeah love 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 love